Hello YouTube, Unknown Prepper here. Today going over the solar kit that I am building for my shed, which I'll eventually use for an off-grid cabin. I just kind of wanted to go through the components that I bought, uh, what comes with each kit, and then the cost of everything, and we'll kind of go over that in the end. Uh, so to start, the two solar panels that I have, that I have here are part of an eco-worthy kit. See the logo right there. Uh, so the eco-worthy kit cost me $243 and the kit comes with two 100 watt solar panels the and basically everything you need to set them up we have uh, our solar power controller which will control the amount of um, voltage coming in from the solar panels to make sure that there's a safe amount coming in uh, you can also hook directly up to the solar controller for all the all the power coming in, but I don't really recommend that because it's going to fluctuate a little bit here and there depending on uh, how much power the solar panels have coming in due to the sun being out or behind the clouds. Um, it also includes all the cables that you're going to need. These are Ys that you can hook up both the solar panels together um, so that the hot comes in on one line and the ground comes in on another line. Um, like I said, here's the hot line that would come in from up top and then hook into the uh, solar power controller, the ground line, and then this would go from the solar controller uh, into the batteries themselves. Um, it comes with the mounts to mount the solar panels on your roof, which is nice. Um, some of the kits come with just plain solar panels. Um, you can see if I lift the solar panel up, it does have the lead on the back along with a little controller box on the back as well, along with all the ratings. Uh, so you could do the math and figure out, uh, you know, what kind of, what type of cables you need and stuff, but they've, they've kind of included all that already uh, built for the size of the voltage that you're gonna be bringing in with these specific solar panels. So once you bring the power in and you've regulated the amount that you're bringing in, uh, it would have to go to a battery. So I've purchased the uh, Renogy this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Uh, this is an AGM. It's a uh, lead acid. It's not one of the new LiPo 4 or Life 4s, whatever they are. So this is an old school type of battery, um, but it's an AGM. So you can deplete this thing down to around 50%. You're not gonna cause any damage to the cells. And one of the advantages of this over one of the, uh, the Life 4s is this is uh, about half the price for the, the same size battery. And these do work in uh, colder temperatures and hotter temperatures than the Life 4 slash LiPo style batteries. Um, but they are much heavier, they're much larger, um, and they're not as efficient as the newer ones. Um, but I wanted to build a system that would be useful and yet not super, super expensive that a normal person could afford to run a solar setup. Um, so this battery was $189.99 which is expensive, but if you only need to buy one of them and you're only running a small cabin, this is perfect. Uh, next, after you go from the um, battery, you're gonna need an inverter. Now with the inverter, I went much larger than I probably will ever need. This is a 2000 watt Renergy uh, inverter and it's pure sine wave, which is important. If you're gonna charge laptops or run uh, a TV, anything that is gonna be affected by uh, the pulses of electricity, you want to run a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, don't fall victim to not buying the pure sine wave because you can get stuff that's much cheaper. Um, that's not pure sine wave, but you could damage your electronics if you're not buying the right thing. Uh, again, 2000 watts is probably way overkill for what I'm going to be using this system for. But I'm a big believer in overbuilding the system and having the capability to run something larger. Uh, down the road if you wanted to, or upgrading your system and making it larger, um, then to have an issue where you need to run something larger than what your system can handle, and then you're kind of screwed when you go to run it. Um, along with the Renergy, uh, Renergy 2000 watt inverter, it also came with the cables that you're going to need to attach it to the battery. These are nice, really thick gauge wires. You also want to make sure uh, that you're getting wires that are thick enough gauge. You can go online and look at... Um, charts that will show you uh, how thick gauge your wire needs to be depending on how far you're running the length or how much electricity you're running through uh, your system. Along with that, Renergy also included a an on-off switch so you can kind of tell the inverter to shut the power off if you needed to. Um, if you want to shut it off when you're not using it, 
Um, again, this is a really good product. These are kind of expensive, so I don't ever see foresee having an issue with it, but it does have an off switch as well. Um, so grand total to run a system of this size is going to be $712.86. And um, there's going to be a couple other small things that you're going to have to buy, including some um, fuses to make sure that the system stays nice and safe. And then uh, you're also going to need some other hardware like screws to mount the um, inverter into the walls and stuff. Um, but basically, I just kind of wanted to show what you could get for under $1,000. Um, a system like this will run a bunch of really small stuff. Um, it, pretty much anything that you can plug into your wall, this system will run. But you're not going to want to run things like hair dryers or heaters, uh, stuff like that. Uh, with one battery like this, you're just going to drain the system so quick that I wouldn't recommend doing something like that. But this will run incandescent lights, LED lights, uh, you name it. If it's not a big appliance... This battery, that uh, inverter, and then these solar panels bringing in, you know, probably roughly around 180 watts um, at a time could recharge that battery fast enough that if you were using a bunch of small components, you could you could recharge the system fast enough that you probably wouldn't even really uh, touch the battery level uh, in the battery. You're mostly just going to be running straight off of the solar panels. And again, you know, you're going to have a little bit of resistance running through the wires, uh, so you're not going to get the full 180 that's going to bring in because you're going to lose some of it through the wires and everything like I said but overall this is a kit that you can build for under a thousand dollars and you'll basically be able to run most of what you need to run in an off-grid cabin pretty much all the time as long as the sun comes out and if you wanted to extend the uh, amount of power that you had you could get another one of these and then you could wire them together and still run them through that inverter and it would handle it no problem. And you could uh, you could run some of the bigger components for longer. But basically this is, like I said, I just wanted to show what you could get for under $1,000. And this system is going to be safe. It has thick enough wires that you'll be able to run some of the bigger components and not have any issues. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below. Uh, in about two weeks, I'm going to be hooking all this up in my shed. And I'm going to take a video of me doing the install and explaining how I'm going to wire everything. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you what you guys could get for that money point. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. Thank you.